Hello all, welcome to part 15 of mobile testing training series. In this session, I am going to explain the difference between using real devices for mobile application testing versus using emulators or simulators for performing the mobile application testing. So let's get started. You see, coming to the real devices, we need to purchase them, right? For example, your company got a project. Your company is a service-based company where you are working and suddenly your company got a project from the client, okay, who is paying you some money in return for your testing services provided. And the project is based on mobile application, okay, testing. You have to test a mobile application is the requirement. Now, the client is asking you to test this particular application in hundreds of devices, okay? It's a very big project. Hundreds of devices are required. Now, if the company that is serving this mobile application testing as a service it is providing, if it decides to purchase all the hundreds of devices that this particular ap mobile application is going to support, you see how much cost burden the company has to face, right? Hundreds of devices, one device, 50,000, let's say 100 devices. Just imagine how much amount of money need to be spent. It may be less than whatever the client is paying sometimes, okay? The things may happen where the client, whatever is paying, is going completely into the purchasing of the devices. Okay, that may happen. So, is it uh, possible for us to test the mobile application on each and every real device that is supported by this mobile application? The answer is no. We cannot procure or purchase that many number of mobile devices that are supported by the mobile application, okay, as part of performing mobile application testing. That's the problem. It will be a huge cost burden for the testing service providers to arrange all the supported mobile devices for performing the mobile testing on the real, dev real devices. This is not possible at all because of the huge cost burdens, okay? The cost is more. Then how to overcome this cost burden, guys? How to overcome this cost burden? The answer for this is to use emulators and simulators, okay? In place of the real devices, we have to use some emulators and simulators, okay? So what are these emulators and simulators? I'll explain, okay? So even there is a difference between these emulators and simulators, okay? There is a difference between these emulators and simulators, though both serve the same purpose, but they have a difference in between them. Before I go to that difference, okay? I'll, I'll be explaining about the difference between emulators and simulators later, guys, okay? Uh, in the upcoming sessions. But for now, in this session, let's understand emulators and simulators together with that common purpose, okay? So instead of using the real, real devices, real mobile devices for performing the, by installing the mobile application in the real, real devices and testing them, testing the application, rather we'll be choosing emulators and simulators to save the cost burden, okay? To save from the cost burden, to re reduce the cost, okay? So instead of purchasing those many number of devices, we go for emulators and simulators. Emulators and simulators are just like software programs, guys. They are simple software programs which need to be installed and uh, once installed, right, we can launch this kind of devices. You see, there is one image here. You see, Android Virtual Device Manager is a software name, okay? This, this Android Virtual Device Manager, if you install in your Windows operating system or whatever the operating system, it will come like this. And from here, you can click on this, uh, uh, you can you can play this and automatically when you select this Pixel 3 API 28, okay? Pixel 3 API 28 with this resolution and all, Android 9.0 operating system and all. If you select this mobile device type and then run is run this, you see this kind of device, virtual device will come. This is not a real one. It's not a physical one, guys. Okay. Using the software, you are mimicking the original device. Okay. These are possible with the help of emulators and simulator software programs. Okay. There are different emulators and simulators software programs by using which we can launch this kind of virtual mobile devices, which are not physical which mimic the uh, real mobile devices, okay? Instead of purchasing them, simply we'll uh, go with this kind of softwares and uh, perform testing. So now there is a, there's another problem, okay? There is a problem with this emulators and simulators. So can you completely replace this real devices with this emulators and simulators? Because anyhow, these software programs are, uh, these mobile devices, uh, virtual mobile devices uh, generated by this uh, softwares, or anyhow mimicking the original real devices. So is it possible for everyone to completely use emulators and simulators in place of the real devices and test the mobile applications completely on these emulators and simulators? The answer is no, guys, okay? 
though this simulation is happening, though they are mimicking the original real devices, but there are some problems. What are the problems? Here is the problems, okay? So even though we are reducing the cost burden and overcoming the cost burden by replacing the real devices with emulators and simulators, okay, we still have to face the below challenges with these emulators and simulators. What are those challenges? These emulators and simulators are slow when compared to the real mobile devices. You see, uh, when you uh, based on your computer machine and based on the software you install, this is a very huge software, guys. Okay, which takes a lot of your uh, com computer's resources, and uh, you cannot uh, literally do anything else apart from using the software. Sometimes using the software is also a headache. Okay, this uh, this device may launch. Uh, this uh, this uh, virtual device may come on the screen after some time. It may not come immediately. When you select some option on this mobile device, okay. Uh, or uh, just select this uh, browser option, it will take some time to load. It's kind of slow, okay? They are not speed, guys, okay? If you do the same thing, same testing on the mobile devices, your testing will be fast. But if you do the testing on the simulators and simulators, okay, the the functionality of the application will be very slow and, you know, a uh, lot of uh, patience you should have to actually perform testing, okay? Emulators and simulators are slow when compared to the real mobile devices. We have to get user to it while testing the mobile apps. Okay, you should not lose your patience, and you you have you should get a frequency with this uh, virtual device uh, generated by this uh, emulators or simulators uh, to perform the testing. Okay, you have to get used to that. It will not be same as uh, the real mobile devices. Okay, the kind of slowness you have to experience, and with the slowness you have to test. Okay, there's no other way. There's one of the problem you have to get used to it. Second thing is, at the end of the day, they are not real. These are this not real one, right? These are mimicking the original real devices, but uh, this virtual devices uh, created by this uh, software simulator and uh, simulator software are not real one. So there is a possibility of some functionality not working as you have expected because they are mimicking, but they are not original. Okay, so there is a possibility of you missing something. You may get some false results. Okay, well, uh, as part of uh, mobile application testing, you are performing. Some test cases may pass or some test cases may fail in a false manner. Something which has to uh, pass may fail. Something which may have to fail may pass due to different reasons. Okay. The results that you generate, the testing, mobile testing results, application testing results that you generate on these emulators and simulators is not always correct, guys. It may generate some false results. Okay. Not accurate and false results may be produced. So, and uh, other third reason is cannot simulate the real device battery. This, there will not be real device battery. It's not going to simulate the real device battery. It's not going to uh, simulate the real device camera. It's, it cannot simulate the real device memory, okay? Cannot simulate the interruptions like incoming calls, notifications, and messages. How can you uh, call this uh, virtual, okay? This is not possible, right? So some things are not possible in the emulators and simulators. That doesn't mean that we are not going to use emulators and Irrespective of these problems with the emulators and simulators, still we have to use emulators and simulators because the huge cost button is here, guys. Okay, if you are going to use all the real original devices, you have to pay a lot of amount. Okay, and you will not get any profits or something. Okay, so what you will do is you will do a combination, guys. Okay, the important devices where the application has to work out of hundreds of devices, whatever the important devices, a mobile device on which the mobile application has to properly work we have to purchase and remaining all other non-important mobile devices, we have to take the help of the emulators and simulators and then compare, okay? You have to use a combination, okay? You have to use your mind and combination, common sense and all testing, guys, okay? So that's the thing, guys, okay? So few possible real devices which are important for the mobile application to be tested need to be procured or purchased along with the use of emulators and simulators for the remaining one, okay, to save the budget. You have to use a combination. There are drawbacks in both the cases, but here cost is the drawback in real devices, here emulator simulators, results are the drawback. So speed and results are the drawback here. So you have to use a combination of real device and emulator simulators to perform the mobile app testing to get the improved and ac accurate, accurate results and uh, to not uh, go behind our budget, okay? So, and also I already mentioned, right, when I'm mentioning about the softwares, which are simulating this uh, real mobile devices for testing, right? We, I'm calling them as emulators and simulators. There is a difference I mentioned. That difference I'm going to cover later, guys, okay? So, so emulators are different from simulators and uh, I'll explain this, um, uh, this later point of time, okay? In the upcoming sessions, I'm going to cover that, guys, okay? 
let me give some examples of these emulators and simulators in the available in the market. The popular, the popular uh, software programs uh, that is emulator simulator pro uh, popular uh, software programs which can be used for emulating and simulating the mobile devices are one is Android SDK. This is an emulator. iOS simulator is also there. So this is this you can install in your Windows machine and uh, this one uh, this one even you can use it on Mac machine also. And uh, there's some something separate for uh, iOS simulator. Okay, uh, iOS simulator is also there. Okay, iOS simulator simulator is also there for uh, iOS machines. Okay, Mac machines and all. So these are uh, this is Android SDK is emulator and iOS simulator is a simulator, guys. So what is the difference between this emulator and simulator? I'm going to cover later. So I need to also explain what is Android SDK and all those stuff in detail. Okay, how to download and install this Android SDK, how to use it and configure it. What are the different options available in this uh, Android SDK emulator software? I'm going to cover that. Okay, in the next session, I'm going to cover that. Still the same thing with the iOS simulator also. I'll cover that in the upcoming sessions. Okay, in a detailed manner, I'm going to cover in the upcoming sessions regarding this Android SDK emulator and iOS simulator simulator. Okay, I'm going to show you. So that's all for this session, guys. Uh, okay, hope guys you understood what is the difference between uh, uh, using real devices in mobile testing versus emulator simulators in mobile testing. So that's all for this session. In the next session, I'm going to cover another topic on mobile testing. Till then, see you. Bye bye.